Good morning. Welcome to Yap. Kia ora. Good morning. Hello. Calls in the building. Woo! Post election results. Wow. Post election results. Yeah. Um, I think I think we officially know who the winner is. I we think. do. Yeah. 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 Okay. He got. Um, he's hit the two seventy. Yeah. In the electoral college. So. Um, yeah. Well, look. it's a boy. <laughs> <laughs> that's democracy. We got to accept. I mean, regardless of anyone's opinion, that's that's how it goes. Yeah. You know, uh, there's a winner, there's a loser. Yeah, it was End definitely. Off. Yeah, it was definitely, bro. Like, it was definitely the the year of TikTok campaigning. I feel like TikTok campaigning from both parties was so 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 heavy compared to obviously the one the one four years ago. But yeah, I mean, does this mean that Trump had a better marketing campaign than Kamala? It's an interesting one. I think. Um, old, I think really one thing that drives this is gender as well mm. and essentially being macho, right? And I've seen a lot of interviews with, with people who, you know, a lot of people whose, tr whose policies, tr sorry, a lot of people who would be affected directly <laughs> negatively by Trump's policies yeah. who were still very much like this. But when, people, when you are, there was like um, street interviews and yeah. you ask sort of like a lot of men about who they vote for. Yeah. And if they say Kamala, it's always... Oh, uh, Kamala. Yeah. But if it's Trump, it's Trump. Yeah. Trump. Yeah. yeah. So like, it's like there's a desire to be macho, yeah. even if that means hurting yourself. Yeah. There's an insecurity, and I think a lot of these people um, are probably. I think deep down, bless them, they know that they've not had the education to be able to have a reasoned discussion about whether policies will affect them in certain ways or not, yeah. and they just go for the macho one because they don't want to look weak. And you know, fair enough. I, I personally, I'm secure enough my masculinity to say I'd happily be led by a woman whether that's a manager yeah. or a president or whatever but some people can't handle it and yeah well what i'll say the final thing is i'll say well not final thing but on this rant is yeah. um careful what you wish for is what i'll say mm. um because you never know how things might go yeah it's it's scary man it's scary like every every four years they do this thing of like but especially they did it really 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 effectively this time was like the fear mongering of people they were Absolutely. like this will be the last election if we don't win. Yeah. Especially Trump's side. Like, they kept stressing the fact they're like, we need to win this. If we don't win this, it's over for America forever. We're doomed, blah, blah, blah. And I guess it worked to some extent. I think, bit of a hot take, I think that if Kamala was a man, I think she would have won. I agree. I absolutely agree. That's, that's completely correct. I think uh, as, like, a blanket statement, and I know this is not, like, obviously 100% accurate, but blanket statement... I think America isn't and was not ready for a female president. I totally agree. I totally agree with you. I think it's, um, it's an, as again, it's an insecurity thing. Yeah. It's just that I think there's a lot of men out there who can't bring themselves to be led by a woman. And yeah, it's, it's a very, very, very interesting situation. Yeah, because they could like, again, in general, like the average man, I guess, in America, so maybe not an average man, but the average man in America would barely stomach a male Democrat. So a female Democrat is like their idea of hell, probably. I totally agree with and, you. And um, yeah, she had a good run. Um, she did. I was, I've got to be honest, I think when it came to Hillary, when it came to him winning the first time around, I, I, from the start, I was like, he's going to win. Yeah. He's 100% going to yeah, win. Yeah. There was so much passion behind it. And Hillary Clinton was very, um, uh, she was just distant. She's part of a dynasty. She's, her husband was president, for goodness yeah. sake. So his whole like drain the swamp thing, which was the whole thing back yeah. then worked perfectly because, well, she's literally the wife of a yeah. previous president. And that so. was really effective at the time because that yes. was like a new concept, the idea of like draining the swamp. Completely. Let's like turn the system over on its head. Completely. And he still, he still did it a bit less this time, but yeah. cause I guess like to him, Kamala is the system that they are despising and he has successfully won. Um, and I think um, my argument just to that uh, with the Hillary Clinton thing is in 2016, I genuinely thought it was this time though, I thought she was going to win. I, 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 I cards on the table. I, it was really close. Yeah, it was so close, but I think a lot of the, because I listen, you know, listen to a lot of political podcasts, yeah. like, I try to get you know from both sides, even people that I don't necessarily agree with, like Joe Rogan, for example. I listen to him, even though I don't like a lot of his views. Um, but I genuinely thought she was going to win. I thought yeah. that her campaign had so much momentum. I thought that she, I thought it was exciting. It, it reminded me of 2008 Obama era. Like I just, yeah, yeah I, I, hey, I'm the first to say I was completely wrong. Happy to admit yeah. it. No, no worries. I wish I was a betting man, man. Yeah, gosh. Well, 
Funny enough, there was a, a chap on a podcast I listened to who said he was going to bet £100,000 that on Carmela was going to win. He said he would do And whether he did or not, I don't, don't yeah. know. But yeah. If well. he did, rest in peace, man. Well, yeah. It's going to be me. a hard couple of years before it could. But yeah, man, like, I have this thing where, like, so I don't bet because I come from a background that's like betting is like frowned upon, blah, Indeed. blah, blah. Indeed. Um, but bro, if I was a betting man, I'd be like maybe maybe a millionaire by now. Well, funnily enough, the, the, the one bit of betting I was going to do, I have literally like $200 worth of cryptocurrency, okay. right? Because it's a long story. I had this old job that yeah. paid me cryptocurrency. And I, a few weeks ago, was like, ah, oh, maybe I should like buy a bit more. And what I did, this is such a boring story, but essentially I went to buy like a, a, a bit more, not, not, heat, not thousands, but a couple of hundred more. And for some reason, the app just messed up and it ended up depositing it back into a bank account or something stupid. Anyway, yeah. And I looked last night and I've made like another so like 60 bucks on that. Yeah. And if I'd have, you know, if I'd have put in a thousand dollars on that, I think that would have been like $300 yeah. overnight. It's nothing. crazy. So uh, that was the kind of betting that I, should, actually, does investment count as betting? Is that haram or is it not? No. No, no, no investment. No. Should okay. be fine. Yeah, cool, cool. But crypto is a little like murky because like, yeah, it's, it's almost luck. Like, yeah, yeah was, well, the whole thing's luck, really, yeah. isn't it? The whole thing's yeah. kind of luck, yeah. Uh, speaking of crypto, Bitcoin, shut the fuck up. I mean, all the cryptocurrencies shut the fuck up. This is my point. This is my exact point. I should have, hours. exactly why I bring it up, is that last, is that I wish last week yeah. I had have properly done it. So um, I'll happily share this with, with people because I, it's a very, very small amount of money. It's not like, it's not thousands. So I had a hundred and, yeah, so there you go. 209, I think I had 160 last night. Yeah, 7.18%. It's gone up in a day God for damn. a stock to go up that much in a single day. Yes, yeah. is, is just crazy. It went up about what nine thousand dollars overnight, US dollars overnight. Bitcoin. That's mad. It was sixty-eight, and now it was like sixty-seven, and now it's seventy-five thousand dollars. Wow, 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 wow. On route to a hundred thousand, probably at some point next year, I think. Yeah. Um, not financial advice. Nope. Do not follow financial advice. I I don't I don't have any crypto. I got rid of it because I got scared and I, and I only have it because I was doing a job a while ago where someone had to pay yeah. me in crypto. Yeah. And before if it wasn't for that, I wouldn't have had any. So, it's yeah. the most unreliable thing ever, bro. Like because especially like a couple of years ago when Elon had just bought Twitter, he was like pumping these coins all of a sudden, blah blah blah, and like. Bro, people's whole livelihoods were like depending on this fucking one Elon Musk guy, and I bet he's happy right now. Oh, of course. And that's the thing as well is that I think why I am always troubled. What I look, obviously, of course, we make our own decisions. We have our own critical thinking. When it comes to politics, I guess you've just got to look at what kind of people are cheering for yeah. who. And for Kamala, you know, you look at scientists, teachers, thought leaders, intellectuals. Whereas you look at Trump and it's shady, corrupt businessmen yeah. like Elon Musk, yeah. like the pillow guy, like Sean Spicer. Yeah. And it's like, well, who would I rather be in a room with? Who who, who, yeah. who has my best interests at yeah. heart? Are the Kamala side perfect? Of course they're not. Are there crooks on the Kamala side? Of course there are. But gosh. <laughs> yeah. yeah it's, it's genuinely the lesser of two evils every four years. And yeah, I agree. I agree with that. Maybe the more evil one this time. Maybe. Yeah, I'd, I'd say I'd say certainly the more uh, with more evil intentions. That's for sure. Yeah, I mean the mass wants the mass mass deportation of eleven million yeah. Ameri of citizens or not citizens people on the first day. Wants to ban, reinstate the ban from for Muslims from seven different countries. Which the thing is that you know I don't want to play the card of like oh, I've got Muslim friends, but I literally <laughs> growing up in North London, I, I do. You know, I grew up yeah. a lot of Muslim friends, and I know that. Um, when that ban was reinstated, hate crimes go up yeah, all around course, the world. Course, and course. I feel for my friends who, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm a white man, as I, I, like yeah. I say, I stand to, dare I say, well not benefit, but my point is I'm least directly affected by Trump's presidency, yep. yeah, it worries me the most, it really does. Yeah, it, it builds, yeah, th those kind of policies, those like discriminatory kind of policies, they build tensions and those tensions lead to like hate crimes and absolutely, it's heinous. And like a lot of times when that stuff kind of goes down, you're like, you always look at the root cause and you're like, ah, oh, we should have known better. Like it was, it's always a trickle down effect. Yes, completely. And it's like, had this not happened, then the, that would have not lead, led to like the hate crime, the riots, blah, 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 blah. The only thing, the only, the only bit of optimism that I do have about this, right, is that if Kamala had a won, like I said, there'd have been riots and yeah. like that, um, groundswell of MAGA that yeah. would not have gone away. If yeah. anything, it would have grown, right? Yeah. It's like kicking yeah. the hornet's nest. Yeah. So what I'm saying is now, over the next four years, there will be, inevitably, in any premiership, in any presidency, no matter who you are in the world, there are always negatives, right? Yeah. So what I'm 
optimistic about. I don't want people to suffer, but I hope that in these four years, people realize kind of what they've done. And the only way for them to do that is through Trump doing things. If Kamala had have come in and done some great things, people wouldn't have given a shit. Yeah. So if Trump comes in and causes some trouble, there'll be a lot of people, a lot of young men around the world who will say, oh, what the yeah. fuck have I done? Yeah. <laughs> particularly around, and yeah. I'm not, you know, particularly around the morning after pill abortion, there's going to be a lot of guys out there who are going to be paying child support yeah. for a long time. And I heard a funny story about that. Is that like, so, you know, he has one of his youngest sons, Baron. Yes. He, he's like fucking six foot eight something. Is he? Yeah, he's he's freakishly tall. Didn't know that. He's freakishly wow, tall. Wow, did not know that. He, it's bizarre. Wow. And um, he goes to NYU. Yeah. And so it's this is like a generally liberal place, yeah. liberal uni. And being six foot seven, Trump was asked if like maybe he needs to reinstate, not reinstate, maybe he needs to abolish Roe. Wait, is it is Roe v. Wade for or against abortion? For. So abolish abolishing Roe v. Wade is means bringing back uh, legal. not abortion. <laughs> not abortion. So reinstating is yeah, taking Roe Ro v. Wade being in place yeah. means abortion is all good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so yeah, he was asked if he should put it back in because. Baron is probably fucking laying pipe every day. <laughs> but I want to show you, oh show you what he looks like. Laying pipe. <laughs> it's a good point, though. Because, I mean, with the whole thing with, like, abortion, uh, this might sound crazy. It's like everybody's against abortion until they get somebody pregnant yeah. that they don't want pregnant. I agree. I agree. But also, like, just there's, there's the moral perspective. There's giving women, you know, the right to... Jeez, he's, he's massive. He is a freak of nature. He was like a child. I remember seeing him in the news and he was just yeah. like a little boy. Wow. wow. I, what, it's odd. One thing as well that I will say about abortion, which is an interesting point, which someone explained to me a few years ago, which I never even considered. Yeah. So there's the moral argument, obviously women should have the right to choose, which I personally agree with. All of that stuff, right? No one ever speaks about the economic argument. And this is what I mean by the economic argument. Wealthy people will yep. always be able to get abortions, right? They'll yep. always be able to do it. If a girl gets pregnant and her dad's rich, she can go to three states over and they can get taken care of, whatever, right? Poor people cannot do that, right? So what we're going to see in states where abortion is highly restricted, we're going to see a whole generation of kids who are born. There's going to be a, an imbalance. There's going to yeah. be a huge amount of kids that are born into families that cannot handle having a child. Yeah. There's going to be loads of kids put into state care, massive burden on the system, and all these rich people yeah. will not be born. Yeah. So if you give it 10, 15, 20 years, it will mm. have a dramatic effect. So there's going to be a lot of southern states yeah. which are going to suffer. Yeah. So there we yeah. go. But by which time, a lot of the MAGA people will be too senile and old or dead <laughs> to even realize what the fuck's going on. So, uh, One of the funniest things that happened was uh, <clears throat> at, his, uh, at Trump's presidential speech, like his winning speech, he had like a bunch of people come before him or yeah. like thank him and stuff. Dana White was one of them. Yeah. Uh, president of UFC needs no introduction. But he did, the, he had obviously like a 30 second speech only and like he was just shouting out the people that helped Trump win. Yeah. And bro, he shouted out Aiden Ross. He shouted out the Nelk boys. He shouted out Theo Vaughn. He shouted out fucking YouTubers and Twitch streamers and fucking podcast hosts to fucking, for, for Trump's win. So like, I don't know if that made the difference, but the fact that we have the fucking president of the UFC at the presidential's fucking winning speech <laughs> shouting out a fucking Twitch streamer oh my on some like, thank you for having Trump on your Twitch stream. Like Aiden Ross is an, yeah, this is what I mean. Like, it's just, this is, this is why I, there is a part of me that almost, I don't want to say respect MAGA, but I, I kind of find it interesting how they have, it is kind of a, a revolution. Like, the whole thing of it all being suits and ties and people who went to Harvard and whatever, yeah. which is something that we still grapple with in the UK with Eton and Windsor and Cambridge and Oxford. Mm. They have kind of smashed that in the US. So there are elements of MAGA that I look at and I go, you know what, fair play. I just yeah. don't think the end result yeah. benefits working class yeah. people. But yeah. hey, there's, there's definitely- You can admiration. learn something from everybody. Yeah, 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 for sure. For and sure. Um, yeah, it was just such a dystopian thing to see Dana White. Dana White. Shout yeah. out Aiden Ross and the Nelk Boys. Do you know the Nelk Boys? No, I've heard of them. But yeah. I'm not, I'm, I know Aiden Ross, but yeah. I'm not across the Nelk Boys. They're basically man. this like Canadian frat group who are now like just over 30. And I mean, they've been doing the same content for years. They just go to colleges, drink. They're, they've they made the drink Happy Dad. I don't know if you've heard oh, of them. Yeah, yeah. It's about, yeah, yeah. And yeah, crazy, man. Uh, wow. It's, yeah, it's, it's a really, really bizarre time. But then. 
I guess, I guess the other thing is that people are having a stake and a, and a, and a say in politics who yeah. for decades and decades or centuries even have been disenfranchised. So yeah, like I say, I guess it's, it, it, it is a good thing that yeah. people who have less are getting involved in politics and are having their voices heard. heard. Just from a selfish perspective, obviously yeah. I wish it was on the other side, but <laughs> at the end of the day, who the hell am I to tell someone how to think? Who the hell am I to say that my way is better than anyone yeah. else's? I'm nobody. I just have yeah. my preference. I wish it happened. It didn't. We accept it. And let's see what happens. Although I say one thing is that Kamala would not have wanted the level of revenge the Trump is going to get. I do yeah. slightly worry about the concept of revenge because I think two wrongs never make a right. I yeah. think it's better to just accept things. Especially and move at on. that scale. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and, I, and I do sort of think like, what is, what is next? Like it's. Yeah. Yeah, is he going on a, on a revenge tour now? Like, yeah. and also let's let's not forget, the guy's seventy eight, seventy eight, not yeah. sixty eight. Like this guy is, almost, this guy is he's up there. old, he's up old, there. old. Yeah, yeah. And I say one last thing as well. I mean, we saw and, uh, you know, we saw people actually attempt make attempts on Trump's yeah. life yeah. during the campaigns, and I mean, I absolutely hope that does not happen again. I think that's that is terrible and despicable. But what I'm saying is, I wouldn't be surprised. If a similar incidents did occur, yeah, yeah, I mean, you know what it's like in the US. I yeah. mean, how easy they have access to those yeah. things. Like, gosh, it's scary. Yeah, it's, it's yeah, it's a strange one. Scary times, man. Yeah. Scary times. Very, very. We'll see how the next couple months pan out, and then the next four years after that. Um, and I just and one one last yeah, thing, one last little stat on the you can say yeah the bang bang thing. Yeah. But, um, pew pew. <laughs> um, pew pew. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> um, when you have this is a crazy stat. When you have presidents who are conservative, who are MAGA, who are Republican, gun sales go down. When mm. you have presidents like Obama, Hillary, or whoever, Biden, gun sales go up because when a Democrat or a liberal president is in place, people feel that their guns are under threat. Whereas they know uh, that under Trump, yeah, their fine. guns aren't going away anytime yeah. soon. So there's less urgency to buy them. So yeah. very interesting. It's yeah. very, very interesting. Oh, that's, I've never thought about that's that. That's crazy, right? Yeah. It's crazy. So like, even though the, even though the guns become more widely accepted and whatever, yeah. and it's okay, whatever, the actual sales and yeah. the actual, the NRA makes and yeah. whatever, that actually goes down during a yeah. Republican presidency, which so, is fascinating. People that sell pew pew. You should have voted Kamala, man. Come on, guys. What the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> yeah. Um, quickly, I'll, t I'll touch on the dating void. We've got we've got a blind dating show tonight. We do. I am shitting my guts because <laughs> I will be at the door taking names down and stuff. So I will be their first point of contact. So I have to put a smile on my face <laughs> and repeat the same rules 75 times to 75 different people, which is fine. So you've done this. This is not your first rodeo. You've done no, like, no, what, no, five no, times now? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it's still, every time it feels like it's my first. And yeah, sure. That's fine. The thing that I'm concerned about is before the dating void. I'm filming like a segment with uh, a coworker. She'll be on the pod tomorrow, and we're basically filming like a 36 questions to fall in love style video. Who's the? Am I allowed to know the? Maddie. Fuck? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I love her. Yeah. Oh, she's She'll awesome. be on the pod tomorrow. Oh, she's awesome. And Go that will be. Guys. She's awesome. That will be a very much needed debrief because. Oh, from the dating void. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Tomorrow, don't miss yeah. tomorrow. It'll be fire. No, but even even before the dating void, me and Maddie are filming like a yeah, the thirty six yeah. things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thirty six yeah. questions to fall in love type yeah. video. So, um, yeah, HR might need to be called. Uh, <laughs> Why HR? That. <laughs> they <laughs> <At don't least>. <laughs> <laughs> um, But yeah, no, that should be fun. Um, I'm 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 excited. You're 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 pulling up. I'm coming. Yeah, yeah. I, I've only been to one because I've only been here for yeah. one, and it was crazy yeah like it was it was loose it was the one you know with the on yeah. stage antics yeah. Yeah. i'm assuming that that was the craziest of yeah. all of them yeah yeah yeah, yeah. that was it was insane the, what i will say is we got some new hosts this time although they sorry they hosted yeah. the previous one i actually know one of them personally troy yeah lovely lovely man it's his like, birthday today yes yeah, so i hear so yeah, i hear yeah, yeah. so that's that's gonna be cool. yeah. he's a really really yeah. nice guy and i forget the, forgive me the name of the other host uh, elisa Alyssa? I don't, I don't, yeah, yeah, I don't yeah, think so. I know her. Yeah. Uh, but Troy's awesome. So, yeah, because yeah, I've, got, I've got a previous host when I was there. Yeah. Was amazing. Was yeah. amazing. And I definitely, I think he made it. But I'm looking forward to seeing these new, yeah. these new hosts. It's sure. kind of interesting having like two instead of one. It's like a fun Yeah, how does that, like, how does that go? It's, uh, there's not a way to describe it, but it's like, it's kind of more fluid because there's somebody to bounce off ideas. Sure, and like, sure, sure, they sure. can like kind of gang up on the person on the stage. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. can like, 
one of them can like interact with the audience more and one is like the more background it's 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 fun um if you're watching this then it would have happened and we had the night of our lives and <laughs> me and curls have multiple girlfriends by now so. well i wish <laughs> <laughs> i wish <laughs> i guess we'll never know <laughs> um, with that being said guys thank you so much for tuning to the app podcast curls any final words just remember guys accept and be kind and be a good as we say in New Zealand, it's a sensitive time now. Be a GC. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a sensitive now, time now. Yeah. So Be just nice um, to people. tread 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 carefully. Uh, see you tomorrow. See ya. Peace.